Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.2 and Heat Blur Simulations AGS 37 Vigan Module. Welcome to Tutorial 11, RB-15F Anti-Shipping Missile. Today I'm going to demonstrate the employment of this missile, it's the, the later kind of replacement for the RB-04, which I demonstrated in the previous tutorial. This one is more of an anti-shipping cruise missile, as it has an internal INS, GPS, and a monopulse radar seeker for terminal guidance. It's capable of flying a, a, a flight plan, which is given to it by the CK-37 computer, and it can fly that flight plan and engage targets that it detects with its seeker. Very capable weapon. Uh, a 70 kilometer maximum range and a 200 kilogram high explosive warhead. You see here the maximum possible loadout, uh, two missiles, one each on pylons two and six. Uh, so yeah, maximum possible loadout here. This, uh, this weapon can be employed in a quick mode, where it comes off the rail and immediately starts seeking for a target, or alternatively, if you want to make full use of its advanced capabilities, you can employ it in planned mode. And in planned mode, it makes use of the reserved mark points that the CK-37 computer has, at mark points 6, 7, 8, and 9. We'll jump into the cockpit just now, and I can go over those quickly. Um, mark point 6, BX6 in uh, Vigan parlance, is the descent point. That's the point at which the missile will descend from its launched altitude down to its preset altitude, which by default is sea skimming mode. Uh, BX7, Mark Point 7, is the course change point. Uh, the missile will initially fly uh, an offset to the target, I guess in order to confuse the target, uh, and BX7 is the point at which it will turn in towards the target. BX8, Mark Point 8, is the ATP, otherwise known as Assumed Target Point. This is your uh, best information about where the ships, uh, ship or ships are located, and... Um, yeah, the, 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 this is, uh, you know, prior to this point, the, the missile will have engaged its radar seeker, however, and it will refine its flight path. BX-9 is the auto-destruct point. So if the missile reaches uh, mark point 9 without having detected and engaged a target, at that point it will detonate. Cool. So if you want to employ the missile in planned mode, you of course need to have these mark points. And there are multiple ways of getting these mark points into the aircraft. Uh, as I demonstrated in the navigation video previously, we can make marks on the F-10 map, and these can then be loaded into an automatic, uh, like an auto-generated data cartridge. This, however, can only be done on the ground. Uh, another method is that you can create target points in the mission editor. Each target point will correspond to one of the BX points. Uh, again, note that this can only be loaded when you're on the ground, because what you create in the mission editor becomes part of your default data cartridge. If you're in the air, you only have two options. For a planned attack, that is. Uh, you can make a target fix. So I could uh, bring up point BX8, you know, the assumed target point, and I could use my radar cursor to define a point on the ground. When I do that, the descent point, the course change point, and the auto-destruct point will all be automatically generated based on that location. However, you can then go in and refine them, again using the radar cursor. I'll demonstrate this in just a moment. The final method is manual entry, also demonstrated in the navigation tutorial. Uh, so of course for manual entry, I could simply look down at the CK-37 computer, uh, and if I'm ref Lola mode, input, I can start just inputting coordinates, keep in mind that it's the easting first, then the northing, uh, and then I can enter BX and the number of the BX I wanted to enter. So I could enter a set of coordinates, for example, for the target, press BX and 8, and that would then be the assumed target point entered. I'll demonstrate this a little bit later, however. So, uh, of course, with the actual target location being in BX8, your target point, what would normally be your M location, actually becomes your launch point. That You fly the aircraft to your M location and launch the weapon for a fully planned attack. 
Now, that needs to be done in attack master mode. If you try to employ the weapon in nav or reconnaissance, which is SPA modes, uh, the missile will default to quick attack mode. And in quick attack mode, the missile will simply come off the rail and it will immediately engage its radar uh, sensor and it will be looking in a 35 degree arc forwards and it will engage the first target that it detects uh, at a minimum of two kilometers and a maximum of 20 kilometers. So uh, if, you, if you have a target right on your nose and you want to immediately engage it, this is also an option. So anyway, I'm first going to demonstrate the target fi fix uh, method of engaging the weapon. So for this, we need to look down at our weapon panel, make sure that the weapon selector is in the attack position. I can confirm that my missiles get selected if I go into tactical mode and I temporarily flip the aircraft into attack. In attack master mode, you can see that pylons 2 and 6 flash. So I know that uh, I've got the correct selector position. Popping it back into nav mode makes them stop flashing. We'll pop it back into actual position. Uh, the other thing is you have uh, impulse or series modes. In impulse, you'll launch a single missile. In series mode, you will launch both missiles with a two second delay. You then also have another mode. You can see it's, it's uh, marked for the RB-15 missile. You can have the missile in standard mode or in valve mode. In valve mode, you can individually program all of the seeker settings. That these seekers, uh, seeker settings are uh, target type, seeker mode, search size, boundary line, approach, uh, wind, and wind strength. Uh, if we put it into standard, it will use default settings for all of these. So uh, for this particular attack, we're going to leave it in standard. However, I will touch on the adjustable seeker settings at the end. They can all be entered as uh, addresses in tactical input mode. So we'll, we'll do that at the end. Uh, but default, so just so you're aware, in single, sorry, in standard mode, we're going to default to single target mode. Now, this is the same as the RB-04. It simply means the missile will hit the first target that it sees on radar in the vicinity of the assumed target point. Uh, if you want it to do any of the, the grouping targeting modes, then you need to actually put it into valve and start manually programming it. Uh, it will also default to sea skimming and conducting a large area search, and it will have no boundary lines, and uh, the approach will also be done in sea skimming mode. So those are all the defaults. Uh, so in actual fact, um, series, what's going to happen is both missiles are going to hit the same target. We're going to leave it like that for now, though, because I will go over all these individual settings at the end. So attack for weapon selector. I'm going to do series, but you do have the option of singles or impulse. And you're generally going to want it in standard unless you have programmed some um, variable variables into the computer. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to program my launch point. Um, for my launch point today, I'm going to take waypoint 3. So again, tactical, input, 9, B3, and B3 becomes M3. I'm going to go back to output mode, back to actual position, and I'm going to pre-select M3. That's all done. Uh, I then also want to make sure that my uh, my HUD is slave mode. Sorry, is in F. Uh, I'm going to engage the radar altimeter. I'm going to make sure that my QFE is correctly set. In this case, it is. I have a red light indicating that we're not ready to launch. That's because we're too high. Uh, we're outside of parameters. And I could then also pop my master mode into attack. And I'm actually at this stage going to go A1 on the radar, so the radar is on and ready to operate. Excellent. Okay, with that done, we are basically ready to go. So let me set my uh, let me set my HUD up nicely, and we'll fly towards the launch point. Uh, and also, oh, actually, let's disengage the autopilot as well. There we go. Okay, we're going to get ourselves down to the correct uh, altitude. I was. Uh, just a little bit too high there. So as I drop below 2,000 meters, uh, the light should disengage. Oh, actually, the other reason the light is on is it's reminding me that I've selected the weapon in a pre-planned mode. However, I haven't pre-selected any of the uh, the settings, and I, I've not set an assumed target point. I don't have any BX points. So actually, that's legitimate. We want that light to be on for now. Okay, so I am at uh, about 1,000 meters. Actually, I'll come down a little bit more and we'll continue our turn coming around. 
Uh, we can see our launch point indicated as a circle here on the on the central indicator. It's fine. Uh, and I know that my target is out to the north from that launch location. But uh, target should be fairly visible on radar. Also note that um, they're giving away their position by illuminating me with radar. My, my RWR is lighting up a little bit there. Okay, so we're going to continue inbound towards launch point. You can see that I'm about 20... What is that? About 26 kilometers away. So uh, I'm going to pause here and you'll rejoin me once I'm facing towards the targets. Okay, you rejoin me. I've uh, kind of repositioned myself somewhat and I'm now facing mostly north. Uh, if we go ahead and get ready with the radar to set up our target position, let's uh, actually turn down the, the radar brightness a little bit using the control on the left console here. That's a bit better. That can allow us to tease out a bit more detail. And if I zoom down on the central indicator, here we go. Current circle position is uh, M3, our launch point. And here we can see we're picking something up on the radar. Actually, let me just turn up the marker gain a little bit. Yep, there we go. Now, this blob here is a formation of ships out at sea. I happen to know that this is four landing ships. So this is indeed our target location. So let's go ahead and generate a target fix for position BX8. Uh, the computer will then automatically generate the other points for us. So with actual position and output mode selected on the computer, let's press BX and then 8. We'll note that on the navigational indicator it now shows BX8 and there's no position. The circle actually just appears over our aircraft's current position. Let's zoom down a little bit and if we pull our radar trigger to the first detent, we'll immediately get a set of crosshairs. We can move those crosshairs over the target location, just like that, and then do a full depress. And we've now generated a target position. Uh, now, the system will automatically generate all the other positions for us, like I said. We can now flip our master mode to attack, and note we have a red light. Now, uh, there are various reasons why we could have a red light. It generally means that we're out of parameters. Uh, it could be that we're too high. However, in this instance, I suspect it's because the, uh, the turn-in point is too close to us. You'll see this cross that appears here is uh, BX6, which is the descent point. Uh, so we're probably going to have to refine the descent point and the turn-in point, which is BX7. I think they're both co-located by default. If we put the master mode back to nav, and we press, let's have a little look here, BX7, yeah, that's the same location. BX6, yeah. Oh, actually, no, BX6 is even closer. Okay, fair enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to push these out a little bit further, and that should make the computer happy with us. So with uh, we've currently got, what is it, BX6 selected, I think? Yeah, BX6 selected. Let's move that one out first. Uh, we actually, we generally want that to be over water anyway. So again, uh, radar trigger to the half, uh, half position. Let's move the cursor where we want this to be. Well, actually, we'll push it out just out to about here. That should do nicely. And then for BX7, let's go ahead and select that one now. BX7. That's still in the original location. Let's go ahead and push that out a little bit as well. So half action on the radar trigger. And let's push that out to about here. Full trigger action, and that's good. Still have a red light. It might also be that we're too high uh, right now, but we are still over land, so that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and choose BX9. That's the auto-destruct position, and we probably want to push that out a bit further behind the ships as well. So, half action, and let's choose a location out here. Depressed. Okay, we still have a red light, but I'm fairly confident now that it's just our altitude. So, with that in mind, we'll pop ourselves into... Let me see here. Let's select BX8 for the target position. That's probably what we want to actually reference. Let's go attack master mode. You can now see the descent point showing up as the cross. And uh, I'm going to descend the aircraft until it's happy with this. So coming out of active pause, oops, the autopilot <laughs> was overcorrecting us a little bit there. Let's descend and turn in towards the target. Oh, and the red light just came out. So there you go, confirmed. It was simply our altitude. 
Excellent. So we're currently approximately 55 kilometers, I would say, from the target. That's a good range at which to release. So I'm going to go ahead and put the aircraft into altitude hold. I unsafe the trigger. Note that we no longer have a red warning light. I'm going to pull the trigger and hold it. First missile away. Second missile away. They'll separate from the aircraft, and then after a short delay, they will engage their little... Um, I forget if it's a ramjet or if it's a little jet engine. There you go. You see the cover popped off, and uh, it's now under its own power. Now, it will initially retain the same altitude at which we launched it until it reaches the descent point. You can see it doing its little uh, <laughs> maneuvers there. I think it's a turbofan it has, or something similar. So it can actually run its motor for quite a long time. If we go into F10 map, you can see both missiles have separated and they're flying towards that point. Let's uh, take control of our aircraft again for just a moment and fly away from the target because we don't want to overfly that target there. Let's just pop the range down a little bit. There we go. Nice. And actually, we'll just leave the aircraft in a, in a turn like that. And we're going to go here, and we're going to accelerate time, so you can see what the missiles do. They're going to fly out here, as I said. They're eventually going to start a descent. Uh, that should happen any moment now. And then I had the uh, BX-7, the course change point, a bit further out. So they'll, they'll start sea skimming, but they'll continue to fly an offset to the target for quite some time longer. I don't know why, but in, in um, 2.9, the time acceleration is much more jumpy than it used to be. I don't know why it's like this now. Uh, like, it barely is kind of responsive in this mode now. I assume it's something to do with the new track file generation, but I don't know. So where have we gotten to? Oh, I would have thought they would have descended by now. But maybe I'm just misremembering where I put that point. Let's uh, return to normal time. <laughs> I like their little bobbing motions. Oh, here we go. That's the turn on target. Nice. Okay. So did I get these out of sequence? I don't know why they're, why they're approaching the target at such high altitude. This is interesting. We can watch their altitude here as well as they fly inbound. Yeah, for some for some reason they're still sticking at something approximating their launch altitude. I don't know why they're doing this. For terminal attack, they should definitely fly a lot lower. So by this point they should have their radars on. Oh here we go, they're descending now. That's them descending to sea skimming mode. Ships are in sight, and uh, we should witness them smash into these boats in just a moment. The boats have detected them on their radar, and they are trying to shoot them down. Uh, hopefully they're going to be unsuccessful. I suspect they're going to be unsuccessful. There we go, that's the, that's the one closest. This is the one that's going to get hit. And because we have these in single mode, they should both hit the first ship. Oh wow, they're shooting each other. Fantastic. First missile hit. I think the second missile already hit as well. Wow. Oh wow, actually, okay. Um, I suspect this other one, the second target, is actually burning because it was struck by its friend's cannon fire. Uh, it's unfortunate the AI is this dumb. So yeah, they've just about sunk this one. That's two missile hits, and then the other one's been smacked with cannons. So yeah, that's how to do a planned attack with a target fix. Yeah, I'm going to reset, and then I'll demonstrate manual entry. Okay, I've reset the simulation, and we're back in the cockpit now. So now I'm going to show complete manual entry for the four mark points that we use for the RB-15. Uh, so if I go to the F10 map, we can make use of the new quality of life feature here, where if we hold the left alt and left click at a location on the map, we get a set of coordinates. And if I go back to F1, those coordinates are still here, which is fantastic. So if I focus down on the computer input panel here, if I switch mode to Ref Lola, 
and switch to input mode, you'll see that the panel blanks. Uh, and we're going to use lat long standard, but keeping in mind that we need the east uh, coordinates first and then the north. So we want to enter 3, 2, what? Oh no, I'm not used to this. Uh, flip it to output and input again uh, to, to reset. I'm used to number pads being the other way. <laughs> 3, 2, uh, 1, 4, 4, 4. It'll blank and now it's ready for the northing. And we want 3, 5, 3, 0, 4, 1. We can now press BX8. And that is now stored as the target location. And I can click OK to clear that position. Okay, we're now going to do a BX6. We want to determine the descent point. Uh, so let's say that we want the missile descending about here. There's another set of coordinates. Let's jump into here again, and we'll simply start entering them. So 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, niner. It blanks. 3, 5, 1, 2, 4, niner. BX6. That's stored. Done. Okay, next we're going to want the, the turn into target point. I'll make it about here. Uh, so once again, we're going to go uh, 3, 2, 2, 7, 1, 0. And 3, 5, 2, 4, 5, 7. And that's BX. Seven. Finally, we need the auto-destruct point. So again, F10 map, and let's say that we want it to fly out to about here before it self-destructs. So that's going to be 3, 2, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 5, 3, 5, 4, 7, EX, 9. Excellent. We can now go to output mode and actual position and clear that. Weapon selector to attack, uh, series operation, standard settings. Uh, we're going to flip the system into attack master mode. Uh, I'm actually going to leave the radar off just now because that means the, the enemy won't know we're coming. F mode for slave, that's selected. QFE is set. And we can also confirm in tactical, uh, tactical mode for the computer, two missiles are correctly selected. Excellent. So uh, we could actually fly the aircraft to the launch point straight away and attack that target. And if we want to validate where everything is, I can go BX8, uh, and it's going to give me steering towards the target location. If I come around now, actually, towards the target location, I should then also see the descent point as a crosshair on the central indicator. Okay, I'm actually not seeing it. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit further. Nope, still not seeing it, actually. It might simply be because I'm too close. Uh, let's go ahead and just make sure that we have all these positions, though. BX7, there it is. BX6, there it is. BX9, that's the auto-destruct point. So uh, otherwise, I wouldn't demonstrate the actual launch because otherwise it's exactly the same. Uh, so all you have to do is make sure that you enter your descent point, which is BX6, your course change point, which is BX7, your assumed target point, which is BX8, and your auto-destruct point, which is BX9. As long as these positions exist, you can then proceed with your attack. I'm going to reset again, and then I'll demonstrate quick mode. Okay, here we are in the cockpit again, and we're going to demonstrate quick mode for the missile. So, setup for quick mode is, as you would expect, pretty quick. I've got the weapon selector in attack. Uh, I've got series selected, and I've got standard instead of uh, variable on the settings here. I'm in nav master mode. This will work in either nav or reconnaissance mode, SPA. And uh, I've got the radar on. I, I had to switch my radar to A1 mode. And I've got the 30 kilometer uh, range displayed here. I know that I'm directly heading towards my target. I'm just going to accelerate so I get there a little bit quicker. So I, I need to have the target kind of on the nose, although the missile will seek 35 degrees uh, of, of a cone. And I need to have the target within a maximum of 20 kilometers. 
because in quick mode, the missile will only attack a target between 2 and 20 kilometers, and it will engage the first target that its radar picks up. I've set a 30 kilometer uh, range scale on my radar. Let's actually bump that back to 60, and we can see our targets here. Let's come back to 30. As I've done before, actually, I'm going to bring that uh, brightness down a little bit. I often find the default on the radar is too bright. Okay, so in this range scale, I want to wait until the ships are at this line here. That's the 20 kilometer line. So I'm going to continue inbound. I'm actually going to bring the speed back a little bit because I suspect you're not supposed to launch these missiles uh, at supersonic speeds. I'm going to go uh, trigger safety off at this time. If we had a red light, it would mean that we were too high. Uh, so I'm at the correct altitude for launch. Uh, they're just coming within 20 kilometers now, so I'm going to pull the trigger. Both missiles are away, and actually I can visually see these uh, these aircraft. And let's pop ourselves into a turn off target here, so that we don't get blasted. Missiles immediately enter sea skimming mode, and they should immediately start searching for the target. You know, this is uh, what I would imagine you would do if you were in a reconnaissance mission and you suddenly detected a bunch of targets. Uh, you could do this kind of quick attack without any pre-planning. So, missiles are inbound. Let's switch to the view of the boats and see what we get here. It would seem the boats aren't even responding. Oh, no, they are now. They see them now. <laughs> Once again, they're shooting each other. Oh, the missiles hit the targets behind us, I think. Oh, I think this one got hit as well. Okay, fair enough. So those were, those were two good hits there. We've actually badly damaged two of these ships with that quick attack mode. Very, very nice. And oh, something to note, uh, the red light filled last will always appear when the last missile is away. You can safe the trigger and um, you're then ready to continue. Uh, I'll pop the radar off as well. So that was the, the quick mode. Now uh, I'm going to reset and I'll quickly go over the uh, adjustable settings that the Seeker has. Okay, so finally, let's take a little look at the advanced missile programming features. These are to be used with the switch in the valve position rather than standard. And uh, note that uh, the defaults shown on this chart here are in bold. This comes from the excellent Chuck's Guide. Take a look at this. It has a lot of very good information for the AGS-37 Vigan. So first we have the target selection. This is an address in tactical selected with, uh, sorry, entered starting 8-1, and then you've got four digits. A third digit would set you to single target, which is the default. Uh, if you set the fourth digit to yes, you'd be in multiple target N mode. What this will do is it will look for, uh, a, basically it'll randomly select a ship that's part of a group that's closest to the assumed target point. Fifth digit is multiple target A. This is completely random. It will choose a random ship uh, just from what it detects on its radar. It doesn't even care about which one is closest to the assumed target point. Group target will detect uh, groups of three ships within a set distance and attack a random one within that group. So these are just different ways of selecting the target. Uh, 83 allows you to set your seeker modes. Uh, so the default one here is um, to, to be an area search, uh, so that would be um, that would be sea skimming and area search. You can set the third digit to one and it'll then go 30 meters above sea level to fly a little bit higher. If you set the fourth digit to one, you'll go on a bearing search mode and uh, fifth and sixth digits don't do anything. Uh, 84 is the search area size, so you can have precise, small, medium or large, with the large area being the default. 85 allows you to set a boundary line. You could either have a boundary line to the left or to the right, or both, in fact, and you can set the distance from the target that those boundary lines will be. Uh, the missile will not breach these boundary lines. Target approach, uh, default is sea skimming. Uh, however, you also have uh, the option of uh, setting a, a 10 meter altitude. 
So uh, that's the other way of doing it. You then also have addresses 87 and 88 for setting a wind direction and speed. If you don't enter these, the missile will automatically get the setting from our aircraft. So let's give this a quick try. Uh, let's say, for example, that I want to uh, change target selection to uh, multiple target A. So that would be fifth digit one on address 81. Uh, that would be 810010. So that we're going to set that up for target selection. Seeker mode, let's put it into non-C skimming for seeker mode. So that's uh, 83 and then third digit would be one. And we're gonna leave it in area search, which is zero on the fourth digit. And then fifth and sixth are just zero on that one. And we'll leave it in a large search area. We won't set a boundary line. And we'll set the target approach to the 10 meter alternative. So for that one, we can enter eight, six. Uh, that would be zero. And then zero, zero, zero. And we won't set the wind. We'll get that from the aircraft. Excellent. Okay, so let's uh, let's jump into the aircraft and give that a go. I'll show you what that looks like on the keypad. So, we're going to put the computer into tactical main mode, input, and then the first one for the targeting mode, we're going to enter 8, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then we're going to press LS, and that will take that reading. Next, we're going to input 8, 3, one, zero, 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 and LS. And finally, we're going to enter eight, six, zero, 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 LS. And those have all now been programmed. So if we put this back into output mo uh, master mode, we can see the weapons on the pylons. Uh, I don't recall actually if we can see what, what the addresses are in by default. Um, so no, we can only set these addresses, I think. I don't recall any way of actually reading them. So with that done, we are set. So that's the that's the programming for target selection. And we also changed the seeker mode and we also changed the target approach. Those are all the, the, the basics of employing the, the RB15. So I, I've demonstrated uh, using a, a target fix and in a, in a planned attack. I've demonstrated manual entry of points, again, in a planned attack. I've demonstrated the quick attack, and I've also demonstrated how to change the default seeker settings. Note that once you've changed those settings, you must flip your switch from standard to valve to actually use them in the seeker. Um, like I said, it's also possible to get those mark points from F10 labels and from the mission editor. Uh, but that's uh, standard navigational stuff that I've demonstrated before. So, thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. If you'd like to further support the channel, you have the option of joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew for a small monthly fee. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. Your names are appearing on screen now. There are some small benefits to doing so, of course. Uh, the, the joy that it brings knowing that you're supporting the Deep Hack channel, but also uh, you become a member of the Deep Hack's Ground Crew Discord, uh, where we interact directly uh, a fair bit, and we also occasionally do flights together. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.